What have I learned about Calgary? All right, so my first trip ever to Calgary, I don't know why, I've always wanted to come here. And I'm sitting on the top, 13th floor of the Hilton Homeless Suites downtown, as you can see. Um, I very much enjoyed it. I very much liked it a lot. I could actually see myself living here, except I think it's awful cold. It's the lady who is uh, cleaning our room, the home housekeeping lady. Um, I'm going to stand up on here so you guys can see. There we go. She, uh, she's from Ukraine. And I said, what's the difference? I said, Calgary, like Ukraine. She goes, it's actually colder here by far than Ukraine. I said, damn. I said, you can go back after the war? She said, yeah. So, you know, good luck to her family. You know, you don't want to see any war. Uh, and I think we could easily get out of funding people dying in Ukraine if we just, America, stopped supporting it. <sighs> Mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. Oh, but it's Putin. No, it's not, dude. It's expansion of NATO. <sighs> anyway. So point being, I've uh, I very much enjoyed it. It's a it's a walkable city for sure. The one thing that's it's it, as I said in another video, it gets like 330 uh, degrees. By the way, I'm just cooking up here. So wondering what I'm doing up here. I just did a video on how to save money uh, when you're going out on vacay. You just find out if they got a freaking uh, gas grill. We still have gas here, natural gas from Edmonton, and you can just cook your steaks that you got from Safeway, which is just right over that area right down there. Fantastic. Anyway, Calgary gets like over 300 sunny days a year, which is pretty cool. Now it's cold, and I don't know how cold, like, they have a Chinook wind like two or three weeks a year, which is very warm, actually. So a lot of people say the change in air temperature, uh, it's, it could give you a headache. Um, I, you know, I don't know that to be true for everybody. I don't know. But they say it's a lot warmer here than it would be in its neighboring city to the north, Edmonton. Calgary's got about one in four, one five million people in the metropolitan area, which is basically Calgary. There's really no suburbs. I mean, there's like a couple of small, small towns. I mean, but that's, I mean, really nothing. It's like the city itself. Parts of the city are dumpy, and there's no other way around that, like any city. Parts of the city are fantastic. There's very, very few homes. I mean, what I mean by that is mostly just condos and apartment buildings. At least, you know, but I could, I've been here for, what, six, five days now, so I'm sure I'm missing something. But, you know, most of the city is just living in a condo. And they're building like, dude, there's so much construction here, it's insane. Obviously, people are moving out of Ontario, moving out of Toronto, moving out of Ottawa, Quebec and whatnot to come here because this is more freedom. It's very right-wing, which is fantastic. I think the, 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 uh, the stupid mayor is probably a lefty, but everybody else is right-wing, and they're not afraid to share that with you either. Um, it's just a great, people are friendly as hell. It's very diverse, tons of Indians, tons of... Uh, uh, Asians. Now, I'm not sure if these are people on PK or not. I don't know. But it's a very diverse city. Um, and, you know, a lot of, actually, an Indian guy today who was uh, sweeping up the floor downstairs, he just been only hit, been here for a year or so. And uh, same thing, he said, it's just so cold here. I couldn't hardly understand him. But uh, he was from India, someplace in India. Nice guy. Very, very friendly people, by the way. Haven't met any rude people. I think one guy last night during the fireworks was kind of an idiot, but he was just drunk, so it's like, whatever. But uh, haven't met any rude people. People just, you know, not self-absorbed. Um, they got the Bow River. The Bow River goes from here to the Hudson River, which is crazy. It goes from, like, I can't remember exactly where, but it goes from, I know it. See, I don't think it originates here. Maybe it does. And bam, some of that came out. It goes to the Hudson River. Then you got Banff an hour away. The drawback about Calgary, this is the thing I did not like about Rapid City, South Dakota. All right, so this is basically a bigger version of Rapid City, South Dakota. I think Rapid City has like 150,000 people or something like that. Um, it's you know beautiful town. Out in the, you know, there's tons of stuff to do outside. I mean, you know, go skiing, hiking, the whole thing. Just like them. You can see the mountains over here. That's the west. That would be Banff. Hey, you probably have a hard time seeing that. But yeah, you can't really see them. That would be Banff that way out to the west. How do I know it's the west? That's where the sun's setting. And the sun doesn't go down here until like 9.50 or something like that. It wakes up at like 4.50. It's crazy. Anyway, so the beauty of, what was I saying about oh, Banff? Oh, the beauty about Calgary, and just like Rapid City, the drawback is it's by itself. Like literally, Edmonton is three hours to the north, and there's nothing else there. You know what I'm saying? So if you get bored in Calgary, you can't just drive to Philadelphia. You can't just drive to Boston. That's the nice thing about the East Coast I think it's overlooked a lot. You know, from basically the deep, the Richmond, Virginia, the Boston corridor, you can traverse that in one day easy. I mean, it's not fun to go from D.C. to the Maine. I've done it a million times, but you can easily do that a day. No big deal. So you could literally go see, you know, freaking 1 o'clock Redskins game and then turn around and go see a 8 p.m. You know, probably wouldn't make it quite 
you know, at least you know the Patriots game if they played a Monday night football or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Or Sunday night football. I mean, probably not at 1 p.m. because you just watch to watch the game. But you know what I'm saying? You could go all that in one day. You could see at 1 p.m. Eh, that probably won't work either, just because I was gonna say at 1 p.m. Washington Nationals game and go see the Red Sox on the same day. Probably not. And the reason I say it is because uh, you know the game's gonna take three hours. But you get what I'm saying. You know, here, yeah, you can see the Calgary Flames and turn around and go see Edmonton Oilers. That's it. There's nothing else. There's no other place to go. You know, I think Vancouver's an eight-hour drive, something like that. You know, I don't know, it's Saskatoon or whatever the hell it's called, in Sasko, Saskatchewan or something like that. You know, that's probably, I literally have no idea. Winnipeg, no clue whatsoever. Uh, Montana's to the south. So what the hell is Montana? Bellings? I mean, who cares? So it's like nothing. It's literally, you're out on your own. It's, a, it's literally in a... A place by itself, which is, you know, in a way it's cool, in a way it's it's uh it's kind of creepy if you're from the East Coast. I'm telling you, it is. I'll never forget. I flew into Rapid City, and we had to actually detour into Bismarck, um, North Dakota. I just it was like this flat plains, and all of a sudden this tiny little town. It's creepy, man. It's like nothing else around. I said, uh, people have lived there their whole lives like that. And that's cool. That's like you know, people have been on Peaks Island, Maine, where I'm from, their whole lives. I mean, they've gotten off and gone to Portland, but they've never experienced anything else. It's just weird to me, but that, that is, you know, it's kind of weird. It's very self-contained, very pro, um, you know, oil, pro-gas, you know, very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, independent-minded from Ottawa. You know, no different than Texas would be from D.C. and whatnot. At the end of the day, though, they still capitulated when it came to the COVID crap, like most Republican places do. That's why, you know, like I was arguing with Jill, arguing, I said, with all, with all love and appreciation, you know, I said, I'm not voting for the Republicans after Trump. And so I will not vote for a centrist Republican, a Romney type. I'll never vote for that or her again or him. She goes, but you got to vote to keep the Democrats out of office. I said, dude, we've been hearing that my whole life. A vote for a no vote is a vote for the Democrats. At some point, you just got to drain the House, man. You just clean swamp. And the only way to do this is I'm not participating. Um, you know, if you don't, if you're not explicitly mega, MAGA, I'm not participating. And it's the same thing here. I mean, the guy who is the uh, premier of, uh, of Alberta, I think his name is Jason Kenney, he's not anymore. He was the, uh, the standard bearer for the, the, their version of the Republican Party a couple years ago, and he sucked, dude. He was the head of the uh, Canadian multicultural, Alberta multicultural thing a number of years ago. Just, you know, just a standard, you know, right center, freaking liberal Republican, and just like, uh, I just, those, I mean, look, at least the Democrats tell you what they want. You know, they want to throw you in jail for your beliefs. I mean, at least they say it. So you know what you're getting. The, the left-wing Republicans, though, oh, Jason Tenney, whatever his name is, he's not left-wing. No, he's left-wing enough. Dude. They didn't take a deep enough stand against COVID. That was, my, that was my litmus test. Calgary, all these guys did not take a deep enough stand against COVID. And I, it's just they got bought off. There's no other way around that. And as such, they said, oh, whatever you want, Turdo. We'll, we'll, you know, as long as you give us money, we'll mandate jabby, jabby, jabbies. We'll mandate ma- 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 masks. We'll do whatever you say. But anyway, it's, uh, you got skiing. you got tons of hiking up there in Banff. you just got a lot of activities. Just people are friendly. I love it, dude. Now, it ain't cheap, I'm just telling you right now. It's freaking expensive. Canada is expensive. And even if you're on the dollar, which is 30%, 35% discount, it's still not cheap. Like, I was like, you were spending 120 130 bucks of food. You know, I see them on my credit card statement. It only came out to 100 American. I was like, that's great. But if you're in Canada... Dude, that's freaking expensive, dude. You know what I'm saying? But uh, beautiful city. I love it. They have the Mission, which is, I guess, where the French Catholic settled. And there's just tons. It's just it's fantastic. Okay, so you got, you know, the Calgary Tower. We've done everything. Down. I mean, everything. We haven't seen a hockey game. We haven't seen the Calgary Stampede. But I love it. Will I ever come back? I doubt it. I doubt it. It'd be cool to see how cold it really gets, though. Um, my man Jordan did a mission trip when he was, you know, going through his Mormon stuff up in Edmonton. And I'd have to ask him, but you know, here you get the Chinook winds, which makes it a little bit less cold than it is in Edmonton. But, dude, cold is cold, man. And your old buddy Josh's blood is quite thin since I've been in the South, my basically since 14 years old for the most part. Anyway, if you got experience in Calgary, love to hear what your thoughts are. God bless Calgary. God bless Alberta. God bless Canada. I'm proud to be a Canadian. Where at least I know I'm. Healthcare is free. All right, God bless.